Hi, this is Stan Walters. Are you a professional investigator, criminal interrogator, or just someone who'd like to find out if someone's really telling you the truth or not? Do you think you're pretty good at spotting deception? Well, most people report that they think they're very good at finding out if someone's lying to them or not. But the reality is, most people don't perform as well as they think they do. In fact, people miss about 50% of the lies that happen in front of them. One of the main reasons for that is they look for the wrong symptoms. They've been believing in myths about what are the true signs to spot if someone's being honest with you. One of the most persistent myths that exist is that eye contact is an excellent way to spot if someone's being honest or not. Let's take a few minutes and talk about the cues of deception, the fiction, fantasy, and facts, in particular the myth about eye contact as a way to measure someone's honesty. Now you may have had training in law enforcement or in corrections or perhaps you've read or you're just a student of spotting when someone's being truthful or not and you've been told or have heard that you just watch somebody's eye contact and it'll tell you if they're being deceptive or not. You may have read on the internet, I've even read magazine articles, news articles, even seen on television shows and news shows where people report that a perfect way to tell if someone's lying is to watch if they break eye contact with you. Well, unfortunately, nothing could be further than the truth. And these folks are really severely misinformed about the social science and the study of deception, in particular, eye contact as a tool to spot deception. Briefly, one thing we know that eye contact as a sign of deception is fiction. There's absolutely no truth to it at all. It's the most unreliable body language behavior that you could ever watch for to determine someone's credibility. But don't feel bad. You're not the only one. One researcher sent uh, students out to 90 countries and had them interview people in each of those countries and ask what's the one thing they look for to tell if someone's being honest. The number one answer in all of those countries, you got it, was eye contact. Now do you see why we most of us miss so much of the deception that happens right in front of us? But if you refer to the research, the truth about eye contact and deception is that for example, in the combined results of 32 scientific studies. These are scientific journal published studies that compare the eye contact of liars to the eye contact of truth tellers that there is no difference whatsoever in the amount of eye contact that a liar will make with you compared to the amount of eye contact that a truth will make to you. This is just one social psychologist, but this is not the only study. But yet it's one of the myths that's constantly perpetuated in law enforcement training or in other training or other books you can even buy on the internet that tell you is a tool to spot deception to watch eye contact. But this research goes back nearly a hundred years supporting the fact that you cannot rely on eye contact as a tool for measuring someone's honesty. We go as far back as 1917, Dr. Margaret Mead. At one time a, com a comment was made to her that the eyes never lie. She said, oh yeah, the eyes do lie and how. Now, one of the most prolific researchers currently is Dr. Paul Ekman, University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Ekman has made a career of studying deception and human behavior. He studied the myths of lying. He studied our social attitudes about deception, what's considered lies, good lies, bad lies. And he's also studied the people's ability to spot dishonesty that occurs right in front of them. And he too has confirmed that one of the many myths that watching someone's eye contact is an absolutely unreliable tool to spot deception. My colleague, Dr. Martha Davis, a clinical psychologist in New York. Martha has worked with NYPD and has done some psychological profiling and work with their department on major cases. In her 35 plus years of research, one of the things that she's discovered also that you can't rely on the amount of eye contact someone makes with you being truthful or not. Dr. Albert Moravian in the 70s also noted that in cues to body language, one myth that people often rely on is to pay attention to that, you know, he couldn't look me in the eye. If you can't look a person in the eye, then they must be uh, dishonest. Well, in fact, it's been found that some people actually look you in the eye more when they're being deceptive. That's what Dr. Uh, Ralph Exline noticed. And that there's some personality types that, yeah, in fact, they do decrease eye contact, but the split is almost 50-50. Well, 
But Exline determined that there's also a difference in eye contact based on cultural background, ethnic background, gender. It's basically what he called communication dyads. Let's say in some cultures it's known that it's inappropriate for females to make extensive eye contact with a male. In some cultures, it's inappropriate for someone to make a lot of eye contact with a person who appears to be an authority figure. And that's just a few of the simple situations. Why, well, we could be talking about something that I find embarrassing. I may not have a lot of eye contact with you. So eye contact might be used to reinforce honesty. It might be used, extensive eye contact might be used on the part of a person to gain control and show domination over you. So not every break in eye contact means a person is being deceptive. Sure, it can be stressful, but it might be just an uncomfortable topic. And it's actually a little uncomfortable to stare at somebody a little bit too long when you're talking to them. Well, Dr. Mark Knapp, in his research, noticed there's a difference in eye contact based on personality type. The very emotion-dominant people tend to have less. Very non-emotional personalities tend to have more eye contact. In that same vein, he learned that emotion-dominant people do tend to decrease eye contact when they're lying, but on the opposite side, the extroverted personalities had more. They actually give you more eye contact when they're being dishonest than when they were telling you the truth. Now, for those of you in law enforcement who've relied upon or have been taught, or perhaps yourself have taught in many lectures that eye contact's a great way to spot when somebody's being deceptive, sorry, you're also misinformed. Dr. Gisli Gundersen, University of Forensic Psychology in London, has done extensive research on criminal interrogations. One of his discoveries is that law enforcement, unfortunately, puts blind faith in its ability to spot deception based on uh, body language cues and, in particular, eye contact. But he found, in fact, law enforcement performs no better at the task at spotting deception than the rest of the population. Neither do judges, lawyers, doctors, counselors, therapists, the media, parents, spouses, children. People perform very poorly at spotting deception, except one group, and that's inmates. That's right, prison inmates get about 68% of the lies that happen in front of them. So if you're involved in professional investigations, conducting critical interviews and interrogations, I invite you to take a look at www.theliguy.com. My name's Stan Walters, and I work with agencies and organizations worldwide who want to teach their people how to ask the right questions when they conduct interviews and interrogations and uncover the real truth. Go to our resources there at theliguy.com, and you'll find information that might help you improve your investigative skills, your interviewing skills, or the ability to spot deception. In particular, take a look at the text, The Truth About Lying, How to Spot a Lie and Protect Yourself from Deception. Or perhaps if you're a professional investigator, the principles of connecting interview interrogation might be the text for you. See you soon.